so uh, I'm going to shift gears at this point to talk uh, more concretely than what, we, what else we could do on our site. We've talked very theoretically throughout the various days, and then we looked at uh, creating, uh, trying to generate backlinks. But let's look at more things we can do on your site concretely. So this will work best if you've got a WordPress site, but what I'm going to talk about will also apply to any other kind of site. It's just that your interface might be a little different. If you've got Squarespace or Dreamweaver, you'll be able to do this, but it'll be a little bit different. Joomla, all of these things you can do, but I'm going to focus on WordPress because that's the one that's got about 20% market share. You think only 20%? Yes, only 20% of the billions of websites of the world. So I'm going to focus on WordPress. I'm going to log into one of these WordPress sites that I can show you. If you're thinking about putting together a website and you haven't decided how yet, well, I'm recommending WordPress. It has a lot of pros. It has some cons, of course. But I'm going to log into one of these sites. All right, so I have a very basic site I'm, I'm just playing with. It's a, it's a shell. It doesn't have anything that meaningful. I'm just playing with a theme and such, so just some links and a blog and sidebars. Nothing meaningful yet, um, but it's a WordPress site, and so what I want to do is make you aware of a, of a couple of useful plugins and how to use them exactly. So if you use some, a modern web design software like WordPress or Joomla and the rest, they are often what is known as a CMS, a content management system, which is that I'm going to upload pictures, I'm going to upload text, it's all going to be saved in a database, and then I have a, I have a theme, this is the theme of the site, it's kind of plain, it's got some blue highlights here and there, two columns and such. The content is what I added, but I can easily go over to, um, for example, appearance themes and change from that theme um, to that theme, and all my content is still there, but now the, the theme has changed. So this is a CMS, Content Management System. The content remains there, it's still got the content, but the theme has changed. So as such, WordPress and the modern CMS software is modular, in that we have these modules that we can add to the site. And one of the modules is a plugin. So on a WordPress site, there's a variety of plugins that are available, and I'll mention a few that I recommend if you're running a, a WordPress website. Um, this one over here, Akismet. This is a this is a WordPress plugin I recommend because this helps prevent spam. Remember that I said it's a good idea to have the ability for people to comment on your blog posts. A kismet helps prevent spam because this is used by millions of WordPress sites throughout the world and what it's doing it's basically collecting a database of spam messages. The more people use it and the more it's around the more it collects these spam messages and therefore prevents your spam. Uh, some might fall through the cracks but then if you look at it and say oh it's spam, turn on spam, then a kismet gets smarter. And therefore, you're never going to be bothered by having that message that says, approve this comment. No, Akismet already spammed it, so it doesn't show up. All of these plugins that I'm going to mention are free. Some of them have extra paid features, and I'll bring them up as necessary. But Akismet is totally free, um, especially for non-commercial purposes. Uh, they do have a sort of donation system where if you feel that it really worked for you, you can donate $10, $5, $40. It's up to you. But the free version is very, very, very useful as is. So a Kismet is one of them. Duplicator 
is another plugin that I recommend for WordPress and this is a way to make an exact perfect copy of your website because backups are important. If your web server crashes and you don't have a safe copy of it somewhere, you might not be able to retrieve your site after the server is fixed. So if you use the duplicator plugin to make an archive of your site, it saves every piece of your site. Because a WordPress site not only is the visual things that the user sees, but it's internal things like the database. And duplicator makes a copy of that. We have Google Analytics by Yoast. We mentioned this previously. If I want to connect my Google Analytics account to my WordPress site, one of the easiest ways is to use this plugin. We, I believe we used it in class. I showed you how it, how it worked overall, or if not, I showed you individually if you needed the help. But Yoast, the main thing is that it connects to your Google Analytics site and built in to my, to my site now, I will have a Google Analytics dashboard. So I don't have to go over to googleanalytics.com I can see the dashboard within the site. I don't believe I have it fully set up for this testing site, but within the site, yeah, I would see here the charts and everything right into my site without having to divert over to elsewhere. So Google Analytics by Yoast is another one I recommend. Jetpack by WordPress. This is the, from the official WordPress company. Jetpack is like a Swiss army knife. It has a lot of tools built into one. Uh, more than I can get into detail, if you take the WordPress class, I get into much more detail of all of this. But basically, this is one way, if your WordPress theme, for whatever reason, does not have a mobile-friendly uh, mobile friendly theme, this will activate one. And as I mentioned previously, and I mentioned it again, one of the things that Google is looking at nowadays is how mobile friendly is your site. Does your site shrink to accommodate these mobile devices? If it doesn't, that could be hurting your <coughs> SEO. One very easy way to add mobile friendliness to your WordPress site is with Jetpack because one of the features is activate mobile theme. And that's it. You don't have to change your theme, you don't have to buy a new one, you don't have to reprogram it. You just activate that feature of Jetpack and you have a mobile theme. Not super customizable and super um, themed like your main theme, but you've got a mobile friendly site that is functional and it helps you with the search engines. Jetpack also has the ability uh, to do social shares. You're going to have your blog, you're going to post on your blog, but you better remember also to share it on your Twitter and your Facebook and Pinterest and such. Well, Jetpack has a feature called Publicize, which you just turn on on the side. Once I publish this, share it automatically for me to Twitter, to Facebook, to Pinterest, to Google+. So I don't have to go to all those networks myself and share my post. I just activate Publicize on my blog post in WordPress and it, and it uh, launches it for me. So a bunch of other great features. It's got a feature called Photon, which speeds up your site because it puts a copy of your pictures on the WordPress network, and that's a global network where your pictures will download faster. Therefore, your site will download faster. And this is all free. This is, of course, only for WordPress. You can't activate the Jetpack plugin on Joomla or Dreamweaver or front page. It's WordPress. That's why I focus on WordPress, because there's so many different solutions. And for your own particular site, there's probably a, a related feature that you have to uh, explore. Redirection is another useful one for SEO. This one keeps track of any broken links. But better yet, it creates what is known as a 301 redirect, which is that someone is visiting your site, they're visiting the link contact us. victor.com slash contact us. But actually my link is victor.com slash contact. So if someone's visiting slash contact us, broken link. With redirection, I can set up a, a rule here so that when someone visits the wrong link, actually they will go to the right link. So you won't have broken links you'll have what is known as a 301 redirect. It's just a technical term, but that basically, in a sense, fixes your broken links. 
it redirects the wrong address to the right address. And search engines don't like broken links on your site. So if you've got this tool, redirection, at the moment, because it's a test site, there's no traffic to it really, I would see a list of all the broken links. And then I can create a rule, a redirect, to say, okay, when people go to my contact-us page, actually they should just be going to contact. Add the redirection, and now no more broken link. That's very useful if you, if you didn't delete a page, but you renamed a page. You might have had traffic going to that old link, and now you don't have that traffic, and now the search engines will see broken link. And that could ding you on, on SEO. So no problem. Set this up here, and then the, the, the link goes, the user travels to the right link, and the search engine sees that, and they like it. And lastly, I'll show you this one in more depth, Yoast SEO. This is a full-featured plugin that lets us manage these other aspects of SEO. Remember we created those keywords in the long tail keyword on day one. We're going to apply them today. And the easiest way, one of the easiest ways, I believe, with WordPress is to use this plugin. There's other famous ones like the all-in-one SEO pack for WordPress and maybe a couple others. They all are trying to do the same thing in, in that they let you add your meta tags and edit your descriptions and all of that. And I've used this one most and I, and I have colleagues that have used the all-in-one SEO pack and it works great for them so there's no wrong answer really but all I can say is in my experience this is the one that I've used the most and I know how it works the most so I can recommend it. What that plugin would do for example is in general it would tell me if there's any issues with the site in general and it is telling me here huge SEO issue you are blocking access to robots you must go to your reading settings and uncheck the box for search and visibility now this is a testing server so I know that I know that there's a I know that that problem exists but if this were my real live site this could be a big problem that I'm not getting traffic to my site because my robots file is preventing traffic. What does that mean? It's a bit technical, but this is here to help you fix that. If I install that Yoast plugin, I have a brand new section called SEO, where I can set general parameters of my site and, and so forth that are very useful to have set up. I'll show you the important ones. Yes. Do you have to uh, add the plugins uh, on every website you have, or is just your account and it applies to the website? It depends. It depends on those other accounts. If they're all WordPress sites, you could manage them all at once. You need a little bit of setup, though. You need to link all of your sites over to WordPress.com. Then you'll be able to access them. So these websites that I deal with are most of the time on Bluehost or GoDaddy, but they're still linked to a WordPress.com account to manage those things quickly. If you don't set it up there, then you just have to log into each of the sites and set the plugins for each of the sites. What about if someone designed your website some time ago and you have no idea if that's WordPress or something else? Yeah. Can you find out by going into your uh, host? Uh, on your hosting provider, you probably cannot check that, mm -hmm. but one of the best ways to check if a site is WordPress or not is to look at the code of a site. So on most web browsers, you visit any site, you right-click on a blank spot of the site, you usually have then the option of view page source, which is the code of the site. And then you look for the keyword of... <coughs> You look for the keyword of WP dash whatever. 
I'm trying to find one here just to show you. I'll do find wp dash. Here we go. If you see somewhere in your code wp dash includes or wp dash content or wp dash admin, that's WordPress. So most web browsers let you view the code. And it's right click, view source. And so here there's a lot of spots where WP shows up. There it is, WP includes. It's a WordPress site. So the plugin um, gives you these great features, uh, general your info. So here, this would be something that I would fill in um, if I wanted to further control what is my page look like on a Google search, um, it will pull information from the pages themselves, but if I want to fine-tune that to say something else on the search engines, I can change that. And then very useful here is, well, is this website about a company or a person? If I set it up as a company, then I can set up the company name and a company logo, and then that could show up on a Google search whereas my competitor never did that, so theirs shows up like a plain old link, whereas mine shows up with my logo to stand out. Here's another way to add the Webmaster Tools verifications. But the way I showed, I believe this is the way I showed most people if they needed to do this, but here's where I would add the code for Bing, for Google, also for Alexa and Yandex. Alexa is important in terms of SEO and such, but not as much as Bing or Google. So I won't be talking about Alexa, but you can look it up, how to verify my site with Alexa. There will be plenty of tutorials. Yandex, to my knowledge, is a search engine, but it's very popular, I think, in Russia or China, maybe? So if I want to also tap into that uh, market, I can, I can verify my site in Yandex. Um, I personally haven't had to do it for any clients really because they're not targeting that market. Anyway, other things. Uh, security, that's fine. Uh, titles and meta, I'll explain a bit more when we look at pages. But uh, social, this has a way for you to also craft your message on social media. To inform Google about your social profiles, we need to know their addresses. For each, pick the main account associated with the site. So if I add my Facebook address here, and my Twitter, and Instagram, and everything, this information is then relayed over to the search engines, to Google specifically, and then it further uh, bolsters your presence and your authority on the search engines. So again, it's not just what you do on your website, it's what you do outside of your website. And now here, we're letting the search engines know we're also on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram because they're very important, and LinkedIn, and we're also on MySpace because we're ironic, and all of these other things. Pinterest, YouTube, Google+. And then you can further craft the message on Facebook. Have you noticed sometimes when, when Facebook, when, when you get results on Google that are about Facebook, they, look, they might look different than other results? Well, here is how we can craft that. If I want a specific image to show up whenever someone finds us uh, regarding Facebook or searching through Facebook, we can add a, spe a special image. If we have a Facebook app that we want to link, we can link it here. Twitter. Um, again, what sort of crafted message do you want to show on Twitter when someone finds you through search and it's a Twitter result? Pinterest and Google+. So that's all that social stuff that is also necessary for modern SEO. And this plugin makes it really easy to do that. There's other plugins that are similar to this, and then you've got other platforms, Squarespace, Joomla, Drupal, 
Wix, etc., they have some way to do this as well. I don't know them all because there's so many of them. And most of the time in my company, we're dealing with websites that have a WordPress. And we're dealing with clients where we either create for them a WordPress site or they started with a WordPress site. If they didn't have a WordPress site, we try to work with them as best as we can, but we recommend try WordPress. It's the biggest platform, it's robust, it has lots of features, it has momentum, it has a great user community, questions and answers, great developers. It's very affordable, and so we recommend WordPress. One more thing here, and then I'll show something else. Uh, remember when we set up our webmaster tools, it asked us, submit your sitemap. Well, with this plugin, I want a sitemap. I just turn it on, create a sitemap. And now it's created a sitemap that lists every picture, every blog post, every author page, everything about my site, and it creates a special file that is more machine readable than human readable. It creates a special file and a link, and that's the link that I give to Bing and to Google that says this is my sitemap, so that then the search engines could further analyze my site and categorize it, and when someone searches for something, they could serve my site because they see that it's on my site through the sitemap. <clears throat> so the sitemap really looks like, you know, something very technical and codey. Last modified date and priority and all of that stuff. I would not myself try to code this. I have a plugin for it. Any questions on these items? Can you have your WordPress site managed or hosted with another company? Yes, that's usually how it's done. This site right here is being hosted at GoDaddy. Okay. So you don't have to have your site on WordPress.com. The limitation of WordPress.com is if you set up your site on WordPress.com, the default is you will have victor.wordpress.com instead of victor.com. WordPress does sell you the ability for victor.com, but I think it's much more expensive than what it really is. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother getting the wordpress.com um, hosting. I'd go over to Bluehost, GoDaddy, or HostMonster. What I really like about the Yoast plugin, the, the, the Yoast SEO plugin, is that then it will let you craft your SEO for every page in a couple of ways. Um, when I'm actually visiting a particular page in WordPress, I will see at the top over here that it says SEO with a dot. There's four dots, I believe. A gray dot, meaning I have not attempted to optimize this page yet. Not the site, this page. A red dot, which is this page has bad SEO. And there's yellow and orange, and I forget which one in what order. Yellow and orange, you're getting there. And then a green one, which means this has been optimized really well. So I'm going to show you that in a moment. But here, this is gray. I haven't tried to optimize this home page yet. Again, it's just a test site. And then if I hover over there, I have these things. Keyword research. Analyze this page. SEO settings. So right built in with this plugin, I have the ability to do some research about keywords for this, for this uh, page. Can analyze this page for here they're calling it in links so inbound links incoming links and so forth validate your HTML test your Google page speed that sort of thing mobile friendly test 
It's not going to work on this because, again, it's a test site, so it's limited. And then I can go in and edit the meta tags and such for, for a page, but I'll show it in this other way instead. I'm just showing that now every single page that I can go to, such as the contact page, I can optimize. And yes, you should optimize every page, um, as I'll show how in just a moment. But you can set a title and a description and meta tags and meta content per page, and you should. Uh, you might have five pages to do. It's not so bad. You might have 50 pages to do. Well, if you do have 50 pages to optimize, I would start with the most important ones. First, the top level ones, the home, the contact, the blog, and then go deeper in to your sub pages. Or maybe divide it up in, in doing the top level pages, and then you're about to finish writing that blog post. Make sure that blog post is optimized so you don't have to come back to it later on. So as you create pages at this point, you can optimize them at that point. And as I'll show you here. <clears throat> Under the pages screen, this lists what pages currently exist. And the default is, then I see these columns, the title of my document, and other stuff, the SEO quick ranking, the little dot. What's the SEO title? Have I added a meta description? And is there a focus keyword? Remember I made that list of keywords and long tail keywords. I have not applied them yet to this page. So at a glance, I can see here that these have not been optimized. When I'm doing my blog posts, I would have the same thing. These are my keywords and whatever. I haven't, I haven't done the optimization yet. But let's say I'm going to optimize the home page. I can click Edit. And I get this little box here, thanks to the plugin, where I can put in what's the keyword that I want this page optimized for. So this site this is just a complete test site, but let's say this is a web design website. So my keyword, obviously, I could do web design. And this will give me a, a live search that says these are some relevant terms. Web design, web design salary, web design Omaha, web design trends 2015. Let's just say that's, that's what I want to optimize in this case, web design trends 2015. So based on that focus keyword, this is going to give me an analysis of what have I not done, what have I done, what can I do. Yes? For those keywords that pop up, Actual keyword that people are searching for. Mm -hmm. That's a live search right there. That is pulling in a real search. So then, based on this term, I, I decide how can I use these terms, how can I use these keywords, the long tail keywords, how can I use them within my site and then not overuse them? So, web design trends. My title. Right now, the title of my whole website, because I'm editing the home, the home page. The title of my whole website is Home, which is terrible. Taking that out of context, it's worthless. If I take out the name of the company, VMC Inc., Home is worthless. I don't know anything about it. So I could write something more like Learn Web Design Trends, VMC Inc. the long tail keyword I'm applying to the to the title of the page. So this is a representation of a Google search result. Where it said home, that was terrible. And then the description was simply the home page. Also terrible. No one will know what this page is about based on that result there. So this plugin gives me the ability to edit this. And you can do this again in, in, in Wix and 
Joomla and all of that, but in different ways. So then I would craft a meta tag. Again, based on my long tail keywords and other factors. San Diego based uh, designer Victor Campos um, teaches you the important web design trends of 2015. And here it's telling me, well, you can you you can write a whole paragraph here, but you shouldn't. You have a limit that you should be adhering to, because that limit is the limit of the search results page. At a certain point, whatever you write is going to get cut off. And so if you're writing a lot, at a certain point, when it does cut off, it'll then cut off and look awkward, and maybe even cut more than you thought it would. If you stay within your characters, about 156, 150 characters, your listing there on the search result page will will look better. It'll be it won't be cut off. And then this is the this is part of the the writing uh, something effective, something eye catching, memorable. You have this is your chance to make an impression to some for someone to click. What is your site about? Sell it to them. San Diego based designer Victor Campos teaches you the important web design trends of 2015. Or Hire him to do the job right. And I have 30 characters left. <clears throat> and so here is a phone number. That would be useful. Someone sees this in a Google search, well, they see right away a phone number. <clears throat> I'm going to, um, for the moment, update this because then what happens is, oops, I get red. This page has bad SEO, but wait a minute, I just did these two things. Well, that's not enough. I don't have the keyword, um, perhaps in the article heading, in the page title, in the page address, in its content, in the meta description. The thing is that this tool is a is is a is helpful but it's not the be all end all in that i don't need to beat myself up to make sure that every one of these pages is green we've got poor i think the next one is orange and then we've got i think yellow which is okay and then green um the, the highest one, the green one, or the second highest one are what I would strive for. Definitely don't want red, or the second lowest one, and I want to get the two highest ones. Again, I, I apologize. I'm, I see these all the time, but I always forget the, the name. See, this one is bad, and then this one is not applicable. And then there's the green one, and then there's one below it. <coughs> so if you strive for the two highest ones, you'll be good you eventually want to turn these gray ones into the into the medium or to the good. And the way you're doing that is by following as many of the page analysis recommendations here as you can. Not just here, but here under page analysis. So here's some good ones. You've never used this keyword before. Good. In the specified meta description, consider how does it compare to your competition? Could it be made more appealing? This medium one, no subheading tags. I have not used H1 or H2 yet. Uh, if you if you take or took the blogging class, I talk about that it's a good idea to divide your content into into headings, into sections for readability. It's also good for the search engines. This is saying you haven't used them. The page title contains 34 characters, which is less than the recommended minimum of 40. Use the space to add keyword variations. 
So if my title was only 15 characters long, maybe it's too short to really tell people what the site is about. I'm only six characters away, so I can live with that. I don't have any outbound links. I don't have any links from this page to another page. Now, as I said, I'm not going to live and die to make sure all of these become green. Sometimes it's overkill. Like on the home page, why would I link to someone else's site on my home page? I would link to someone else's site in my blog posts, perhaps, but not on the home page. The keyword or phrase does not appear in the URL of this page. That one's another one I'm not going to beat myself over the head to try to get because I'm on the home page. So that's telling me, oh, you, have, you don't have a website called web design trends 2015.com. And I don't want that because it's not always going to be 2015, only for about 365 days. So that keyword, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get that keyword for my for my site. And again, dashes and so forth show that it's not that good. But if this was a blog post, let's say I had victor.com/blog/web-design-trends. Uh, 2015. That is much more acceptable. The dash part, the, the no dashes part, is really for the for the domain, the .com, the .net, whatever. But you do want dashes when it's especially a blog post. That's what makes the the address understandable by the search engines. So that's a much more legitimate use of those of that long tail keyword and the legitimate use of the dashes. I would not run it all together like this. Then the search engines can't tell what that word is. Yes? So the long tail keyword would it not like if you type it so there's the word Del Mar or is it just good no, it would help if you are specific, but it, it, it depends on uh, on your product. So here I do web design, but I could do web design for all over California. So if I keep it generic like this, that's fine. But if I do specify, like we talked in previous classes, about your target audience, then yeah, I could do that. Now on this particular one, maybe yes, I am doing web design specifically for Chula Vista, but I don't think it would be that useful to then make this blog post about web design trends to just target Chula Vista. I could make a blog post that really targets about Chula Vista businesses um, and then include that keyword in the long tail. But I think this concept here is generic enough that I don't need to fine-tune it. Like if Mm -hmm. It could. Um, you have to be careful, though, on the flip side, don't overuse that. Um, it's going to tell you here how many times you've used your keyword, and at a certain point it might tell you how many you've used it too many times. If I force those keywords into the address, and the headings, and the description, and the title, meta tag, and all of that, then it's too much at a certain point. Then that looks spammy to the search engines. So it's kind of walking a fine line. So that's why I'm saying, if you can get it to green, good. But if you can get it to yellow, the second highest one, you're still good, as long as you're not on red or gray. And so that, that's what this plugin gives us, the ability to analyze a page, to, to, to add our keywords, our long tail, add it intelligently to each particular page, and then analyze the page to, to see if it's the best that it could be. And you're striving toward green, but second place is still really good. If you can get as many of these as you can to second place, you're good. So that's why I could, I could have shown this on day one, and then we didn't need day two and three, or four. But SEO is much more than this. And other, other classes or other tutorials and such are just going to focus on this. 
but that's not the totality of it. That's why we spent three days. That's how we could spend four days, five days on all of the other aspects. The social media aspect, that's its own huge class. We can spend um, also much more time also maybe about talking about paper, pay-per-click campaigns and, and uh, Google AdSense and AdMob and all of that. It's such a big topic of SEO. That's why it's a lifelong thing, lifelong in terms of your site. And uh, a three-week class is still scratching the surface. There's still a lot that could be learned. But now that you've got some education in this, my, uh, my handouts should be helpful to you. You should be able to reapply them to any of your endeavors. These lectures are online. Remember, if you haven't done so yet, send me an email for me to send you these videos. You can replay them. This stuff changes every once in a while. Maybe six months from now, there's going to be new stuff. And, you know, read up on the new information yourself from the webmaster tools or take another class. Maybe you took these three weeks. Maybe you took the five-week version. You learned a lot, but you decide, I'm busy running my company and payroll and all of that, and now I've got to do SEO also. I'll get someone to do it great but now hopefully you have the knowledge also some of the jargon some of the concepts to see when someone is telling you yeah hire us you'll be number one in two weeks sounds too good to be true because it is no one should guarantee no SEO company should guarantee results in a time period be it two weeks or two months or four months or whatever this really depends on the company itself how much competition there is what other marketing efforts and all of that so if you want others to do it, great. But now you've got some of the knowledge to see, do they know what they're talking about? Are they using outdated concepts? Are they keeping up on the latest SEO techniques? So at this point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the main lecture again to say that if you're running WordPress, one of the plugins you need to be running is the Yoast SEO because it will help you craft your SEO per page. If you're not running WordPress, check your own software to see where can I, where can I edit my title and my description. And then once you find those, start adding your keywords. Yes? Um, I might have missed this, but um, for the um, plugins, do you have to pay? To it depends on the plugin. This particular one is free. Uh, it has extensions which are extra features and then those are the not free things so um, for example if you need specific tech support they sell that if you need stuff about video optimizing for video they sell that so for most of the clients that my company works uh, with we usually can use like 99% of the free plugins and there's a couple here and there that we do pay the premium version we pass the cost on to the owner and they know it and um, then they they have the the higher version of the of the site I mean of the plugin any other general questions are there any websites or <clears throat> um, or WordPress tutorials in need any like no help advanced help do you recommend um, any good sites or put the dummies on WordPress? Yeah, I can do both. Mm -hmm. One of them is lynda.com, L Y N D A, lynda.com. Uh, they uh, have been around for a long time, probably 15 or 20 years, which is a long time in internet time. And uh, they've, they uh, are all about tutorials and high quality videos and lessons about every single topic, not just WordPress, about learning about everything, Photoshop and Dreamweaver and eBay and everything. So the thing about them though is because they've got such great quality, great content, it's not free. I don't know the price at the moment, but um, it can easily be $200 a year. So $200 a year for lots and lots and lots of access. So on, on the one sense you might say $200 for your videos, that's what YouTube is for. Yes, you're also going to learn on YouTube, but you're also going to see the quality of there not as good or as consistent. So here's a big one. Mm -hmm. it's it's hmm? Yeah, you can go for the um, month by month, and then only pay twenty-four dollars for one month, or nineteen, or you can get the premium, <coughs> thirty-four dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, there's plenty of books on WordPress as well. Uh, one of the ones I recommend is called the 
visual quick start guide on WordPress. Visual quick start guide WordPress. You can find it at Amazon or anywhere. It's got a rabbit on the cover. It's part of the visual quick start guide series where you get started quickly. Uh, pages full, you know, one whole page of instructions, very visual, very easy to read, not that expensive, $20, $25. Yes? Well, if you have like a, a pretty good computer at your house and you put the web page on it, and you went through like one company or two, put the web, I mean, the internet up to it, mm -hmm. who would you pay? Uh, who would you pay? Just a, a at and no, you're going to be paying... AT&T is just going to be your doorway to the internet for you to use the internet, but your site, to put it live, you're going to be paying one of these companies well, such as GoDaddy. Nope, that's not done. It's not about your computer. It's about putting your website up on a server. <laughs> and you're going to pay for a server on a company like GoDaddy or Bluehost or host you monster. Run it out of a server at your house. Technically you could, but that's very, very, very uh, unlikely for most people. Yeah. Like personally, I have a server in my closet and yeah, I can run a website. But for most people, you know, I don't have that server set up for a lot of traffic. It's just for me to test some things. For us regular people, we're gonna go get GoDaddy no, or it would cost a lot of money too, right? It could, because you've got all the electricity that you're sucking up with your computer on twenty four hours a day. And, and so if you did it, would, would, could you do it through the internet provider? Yeah. Yeah, you could. But it costs X amount for the gigs, right? Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> Any other general questions? Yeah. Yeah, you seem to use GoDaddy a lot, right, for your website? I mention it a lot, but in my company we do also deal with Bluehost a lot. I, I saw that promotion too a couple of days ago, a dollar for domain, mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff. That seems to be pretty curious. Have you? It's it, the thing is that these lower prices are usually just for the first year. So the thing that it's too, too good is that for one year, because you buy this in longer periods, one year, five year, ten years. So the first year might be very, very, very affordable, one dollar, and then it goes back to normal, which is about fifty to seventy dollars a year is not that bad and the longer you buy these plans the more affordable they are 